So this is my 2,000 points of Imperium forces that will counter Simon's Necron incursion into the Astromass planet. Uh, Savior's Landing is where we're playing at. Uh, featured here is a Vanguard detachment of Raven Guard led by none other than Chapter Master Kayvon Shrike. He has a Vanguard veteran squad, nine guys, all with lightning claws. Stern Guard squad of eight guys. The sergeant has a chain sword and pistol and a contemptor dreadnought. In the battalion that's supporting them, we have a priest with uh, six death cult assassins and six acroflagellates. One Xenos uh, Inquisitor, a Canonist supported by two Midgifiers, three squads, uh, one of which has two multi guns. The other two have a Flamer and Heavy Flamer. Uh, sergeants uh, do have power swords, and this sergeant has a Combi Flamer. They have an Exorcist, a uh, Dominion squad with four heavy bolters and a unit of 10 Seraphim with two girls having double hand flamers. So all in all, it is actually 1,999 points for playing the campaign mission provided by GW uh, for the first week. And we're gonna report this to our local store. So this is for real, guys. Hey guys, this is my 2,000 points list of Necrons. I'm playing at the Battalion Detachment. Uh, as a HQ choice, I have one Cryptek. Uh, I'm using this Praetorian Fox, this one, and the Overlord. I'm having one squad of Immortals. Uh, they will be not the Gauss Blasters, they will be the Tesla uh, Rifles. They will be with the Gauss Blasters, each 10, uh, 10 man strong. Then I have two units of each 15 Necron Warriors. Then two Ghost Arcs, which, are, which will be completely empty. One Terrasorak Arc. A night shroud bomber and a death, death doom side. Yes, this is my two thousand points. Mm, ferocious. Yes. All right, the board has been set up for mission one: invasion. The Raven Guard and their allies, Sisters of Battle, will be on this near side. Uh, we have a number of ruins, as you see throughout the board. Uh, Savior's Landing has really taken a bump. Far admit from the Chaos Fleet in orbit. Uh, Simon's Necron's forces will be starting over on the far side. Plenty of cover on this board. Should be good. As you know, Simon has to get gets one point for each unit with at least one model. That makes it halfway across the table. Uh, gain points by completely destroying Simon's units. Not an easy task with Necrons. And then there's one point available uh, for Slay the Warlord. Either side or both sides can get that. So we'll start uh, deploying and get back to you after that. Forces of the God Emperor have deployed. Uh, anchoring the center, we have my Exorcist and uh, my Heavy Bolter squad. And they're supported by some Seraphim back here. On the right, we have the Priest with his crazies, Archoflagellants, and the Death Cult Assassins as kind of a reserve. Well, over on the left, we have both the Stern Guard and Vanguard uh, with Kayvon Shrike right there on the second floor supporting them. Up forward is the Contemptor Dreadnought. We'll have to move around to see where the sisters have taken their forward positions at with the tactical squad there with the flamer, heavy flamer, combi flamer. Over here we have uh, the Inquisitor with the Dimidifier. On the right side, the flamer, heavy flamer squad. On the left side, the Melta squad. Simon's side, what you got? Okay, first of all, in the center, Here's one uh, Necron Warrior unit, behind this one is a Barge, here's a Cryptek, here's uh, the Gauss Immortals. On this side we have a Night Shroud Bomber, and here in the center we have the, the Doom side and the Terrasa Rocked Arc. Then here on the right side we have again uh, my 15 Warriors, uh, I'm deploying in on five, ra five ranks to having more space. Behind this one uh, Arc, Lord and Tesla uh, Immortals. Yeah, that's my deployment. So quite the showdown ahead of us. Yes. Good luck. Good luck to you. 
Chapter Master Kayvon Shrike has heard the call of Lord Gulliman move to this system in order to defend it from any encroachers. Across the field are the Necrons. They may have come here to parlay, but the sisters of the Order of the Veiled Prophet remember Sanctuary 101 and are in no mood to talk. Kayvon Shrike, the warlord for this band of heroes, has decided not to seize the initiative. Yielding the initiative, to the Necrons. Let's see if they fall into his trap. Hey guys, this is Necrons turn one movement phase. Uh, actually, I just uh, moved up mostly five inches in a straight line here, over here. The Ark also. The Terrasorak Ark stayed still. The Doom side just went over here to get shots at this Contemptor. On the other side, same stuff, Boris moving up, Cryptek moving up, Immortals moving up, and a Night Shroud over, flow over there, over his Exorcist. Okay, Necron turn one shooting phase. Uh, first of all, I was shooting with my Doom Sight, getting five shots, hitting uh, four, uh, unfortunately not making any uh, wound. Uh, Tesla was shooting uh, into this squad, uh, also in this dreadnought, uh, causing nothing. The Tesla Immortals were shooting all their stuff inside this squad. Same, this Necron and this uh, Barge, reducing the squad almost just to two. So in a moral phase, anyhow, when you on a one, at least one is going. The Terrasa Arc had also five shots. Um, Hitting uh, pretty bad and also wounding bad, nothing causing to this uh, exercise. The Night Road had uh, delivered his bombs 3d6 on a 3 plus mortal wound, so he had 3 mortal wounds. The Tesla was shooting over there, killing 2. Uh, the Borge and the uh, Necrons and the uh, Immortals were also shooting into this squad over here, annihilating uh, uh, almost until three ones. Yes, and this was Necrons' turn one of shooting. Okay, so for the Imperials morale phase, I used two command points in order to make sure those three girls didn't run away. Uh, the Seraphim did not need to take any tests because they lost two, leadership eight. And then I rolled a five over here, so the two girls that were left are, are now gone. So, time for an Imperial counterattack. Uh, before the start of the movement phase, we got two acts of faith off. The heavy bolters managed to shoot up into uh, this flyer, but didn't do any wounds. While the Seraphim used their act of faith to do the same thing, they did do one wound. Uh, after that, move the Seraphim a little bit closer. Inquisitor has come back in order to do some psychic shenanigans. Uh, move this squad who I saved with the use of two command points forward so they can employ their flamers. And the squad supporting them on the right also moved up to get in rapid fire range for some. The Death Call Assassins and the Archoflagellants, along with the priest, have moved out of the building, advanced forward, uh, not rolling too hot on the priest or the Archos, but that's okay. On the left side, the Raven Guard. Uh, the Dreadnought, which did well to survive the first turn of shooting uh, without a scratch, has moved forward. Uh, I brought out the Vanguard Vets in order to maybe make an attack against that flyer, and the Stern Guard remained in the building. So, second phase. So, in the second phase, the Inquisitor cast Smite. Uh, this was the closest model of the Night Shroud Bomber. Uh, rolled an 11, so with D6, uh, initially rolled a 2, used a command point in order to up that up to a four, so I did a, a further four wounds on it, down to four command points now. All right, in the shooting phase, everything turns its guns onto the bomber that was here. Uh, got down to one point before this squad of sisters shot with seven bolter shots, winning it twice, and it failed to save, so blew it out of the sky. It did not uh, blow up, though. And then uh, the two multi guns, the plasma gun, and those flamers back there shot at Simon's Immortals but then managed to do any wounds in the end. Um, coming over to the left, the Stern Guard veterans, along with the carries pattern assault cannon from the Dreadnought fired into this Night Scythe. Uh, Doom Scythe. Doom Scythe managed to do, how many wounds, Simon? Uh, six. Six wounds, so not so bad. 
and uh, I think we'll follow it up with a charge and then uh, we'll see what comes next. But not bad, got rid of one aircraft, hoping to get rid of two here in the assault phase. So in the assault phase, the dreadnought managed to charge in. Uh, he did four hits on these guys and then three wounds. They failed their armor save, uh, so they are at least knocked down for a second. No morale check needed for them. And then the Vanguard veterans with jump packs with Shrike uh, helping out managed to bring down that flyer. We didn't roll to see if it exploded. You wanna roll a, a D6 real quick? This would be bad. <laughs> it explodes. So we'll see what happens there and we'll take some more wounds. Well, that was disastrous. Um, one Necron went down. Shrike lost three wounds. I did lose one of my Vanguard vets and then the Dreadnought also lost three wounds. So uh, in death, your plane does more than it did in life. <laughs>Necron turn to movement phase. I could resurrect out of four, I could resurrect one immortal back. Actually, I divided up my army groups. One is going to the, ra the right flank over here with uh, Boreas, and we sh will shoot at this uh, assault guys, Bark also. In the center, I just moved up five inches of warriors. Immortals are going also this direction. Cryptic over here. Arc over here and the Terrestrial Act stays still where it is. So this is Necron movement phase, turn two. So this is Necron's turn two shooting phase. The combined firepower of the warriors and the Arc uh, annihilated his assault uh, squad over there. And that was combined with very poor armor saves, I will add. Mm. Uh, over here, uh, the first volley of the warriors just decimated this free girl squad over there. A second volley decimated over here, this squad, and the firepower of the immortals added also to cause these much wounds area that don't count anymore. <laughs> and my Tercer Arc uh, had six shots, uh, hit three times, wounded three times, and blew it up with, I think it was 14 or 15 wounds. It was a lot. The six yes. plus in ball save did not help. Yes. So this was Necron's turn to shooting phase. So this is a Necron turn to assault phase. I assaulted with my Necron warriors into the Dreadnought, uh, causing, I think, one wound just. And then he interrupted with his uh, Dreadnought using two command points, uh, wounding my Necronaut and causing three wounds to him. He's still two. Uh, the Necrolord then revenged and uh, managed to, do, to get through two wounds. So it was down to one and then the Immortals finished the Dreadnought off. Uh, Shrike interrupted and uh, intervened and killed three warriors. So that's uh, Necron Assault Phase turn two. Getting a little desperate for the Imperium, but we'll see what we can do. So, Imperium turn two, movement phase is complete. I left the Stern Guard up here on the building. Shrike is still engaged in combat, did not move him out. Uh, Act of Faith I used in order to double move my Seraphim, and this Imagifier went off, allowing me to shoot. I ended up destroying about seven Necrons. Yes. So I'm hoping to combine firepower with them again, uh, and the Seraphim will be able to destroy them. I moved the Imagifier back a little bit, as there's no sisters up there anymore. I advanced the Death Cult Assassins. I just moved the Echo Flagellate's uh, Rigor, and then the Priest right behind him. So, okay, next so my trusty Inquisitor cast Smite, rolled an 8, in order to take uh, two more Necrons off the board, so we're dwindling them down. We need these to go away so they can't regenerate and we get some more victory points. So, now on to shooting. Alright, the Imperium trying to make a comeback with that shooting phase. Uh, between the Heavy Bolters and the Seraphim and uh, Double Shots and Smite and everything else, we managed to take out 14 of the 15 Necron Warriors. That's uh, going to be at one heck of a morale check for him. Uh, the Heavy Bolter is actually from this squad, focused on the Immortals, uh, killing two of those, while the Vanguard from up here uh, fired wounded two of the Immortals over here, but Simon aced his uh, roll and uh, passed both those saves, despite the minus two to him. So next up is the Assault Phase. In the Assault Phase, these uh, Archoflagellates tried to attack the... Um, Immortals. Um, immortals. Uh, they lost one to Overwatch, 
with those uh, nasty, nasty weapons, and then I uh, needed an 8-inch charge, I rolled a 4, so no good there. Uh, but the Seraphim did manage their charge into both the um, Crypt Tech and the one remaining Warrior. They killed the Warrior, put a wound on the Crypt Tech, took one in return, so they're looking pretty good. Over here, uh, Shrike, surrounded by Necron Warriors, managed to kill three. Uh, unfortunately, he took a wound in return, and uh, I think this... Uh, Slaying the Warlord might be decisive this game. It's going to be close, I think. So, moving on to Necron's turn three. Necron turn three movement phase. Uh, I resurrected two Immortals and moved them up here to get shots at this tactical squad. Then I resurrected here, I think also one? Three. Three in total. In total three. One time with the normal reanimation and one time with the reanimation uh, because of the repair barge. Uh, over here I moved my Terrasaract uh, arc down to here. I just shuffled a bit the immortals in front of this one, one inch away. And I moved my ghost arc into the center. So let's go to shooting. And importantly, you moved your Crypt Tech out of county yes. as well. So the, the girls are out on their own right now. Yes. All right, shooting turn three. So this is uh, Necron's turn three shooting. I used all my shots from the Ghost Arc and from the Tesla Immortals, which were hitting quite well and just killing how much? Two or three? Two. Some really, really great armor saves on the yes. two plus for the Raven Guard. Yes. And uh, also interesting, he was at minus one to hit because they were over 12 inches thanks to their chapter tactics. Yes. So then uh, the particular Hurricane, uh, he rolled on, on a free on the for his uh, Flamer template. I used the command point to reroll to get a better one, but unfortunately it was just a one, killing one uh, of the Seraphim. And then the Immortals just uh, uh, finished them off with the Rapid Fire. The Ghost Arc over here, uh, was shooting rapid fire into this squad over there, taking I think like six, uh, giving like six wounds to them. It was a horrible, but I have to confess, it was a horrible conversation roll from Mac. Yeah, hopefully with the Inquisitor within three inches, I'll have leadership nine. We can we can keep them around for a bit. We'll have to see what happens. So, on to the assault phase. Necron free assault phase. Uh, I had 12 attacks for my warriors, managing to hit 10 times, wounding I think like almost 7 or 8 times in total. Uh, unfortunately, Shrike made all his armor safe, so he could strike back and kill two more warriors. So this was uh, assault phase, and in the moral phase, this squad over there passed their moral on a 1, insanely. Needed a 3 to just equalize. So 50% to just to get away one more, but yeah, he managed it. That's an exclamation point, people. All right, Imperium turn three. This is a barn burner. All right, so uh, turn three movement phase started out with my Axe of Faith. I, I managed to get two off, one with the Midget Fire, allowed the four heavy bolters to go ahead and shoot. Taken down three of those Immortals. Simon took them away from uh, my potential charging units, but we'll see what happens. And the second one, the Canoness herself used in order to move forward with her Power Sword and uh, Infernus Pistol. Over on the right flank, we moved the Arco Flagellate Silver into the Ruins and the Death Shroud currently peeking out around the right, uh, neither one advanced. And on the left, everything held firm. Um, Shrike's in trouble, he's going to sacrifice himself today, I believe, but it's all for the Imperium. So. On two seconds. Who's been clutched this whole game? Uh, managed to cast Terrify on this unit of Immortals, so they are minus one in leadership and they cannot fire Overwatch. Hopefully, I can get my uh, guys in there and do some damage. So, on to the shooting phase. Okay, so in the shooting phase, uh, the Canis fired but did not wound the Ghost Arc. The Inquisitor fired, uh, wounded, and rolled a six for damage. So, Quantum Shielding kicked in when Simon rolled a four, so no damage was actually taken. The Heavy Bolters here fired at the Immortals again, uh, taking two more down. It's uh, going to elongate the charge, but we've uh, managed to take five off the board, which has been pretty good. Over here, the Stern Guard shot into the Immortal Squad, taking one out with their Special Issue Bolters. Uh, so now we move into the charge phase. Cave and Strike has managed to stay alive just barely over here, taking out three more Necron Warriors. 
Uh, Simon wounded him twice, but I made two armor saves. Uh, critically over here, I needed a six inch charge uh, with my guys in the ruins there. Uh, I rolled a three, a two, and a one. I opted not to use my last command point to re-roll that one as it only gave me a 50% chance. So we're, we're going to hope that he maybe loses one or two in the morale phase and we can continue to, to knock him down and eventually get that assault in. It's a long time coming. So we're up to Simon's turn number four. Those vehicles are going to be too tough for me to stop, but we can see what we can do about some of these infantry models. So uh, in this uh, model phase, I used my strategy again for uh, passing automatically uh, my moral test for two points. So this immortal uh, still stay here. Two command points remaining for Simon, one for me. Turn four movement phase. Uh, I got quite back with uh, reanimation protocols of normal and the bark I got like I think like uh, until 11 back. So I'm 11 out of 15. Here I managed to get one back uh, and I just moved them up. They are uh, uh, in, in, uh, in between of 12 inches so they don't get their chapter tactics. Arc just moved over there for shooting and covering the repair. Over here, uh, the Terrasarakt arc moved over there for the Flamer. The uh, Ghost arc also over there. The Immortals in the, with advancing went over there. Cryptic also advanced just one inch more, so six inches over here. So this is next one movement phase turn four. Next one turn four shooting. Uh, the whole combined shooting of the Ghost arc and the Immortals wiped out this tactical squad. Over here. Uh, Cryptech managed to put one wound over there of these uh, assassins, I think. Arco flagellants. Flagellants. Uh, yes, the part, uh, hurricane particle for just uh, I rolled a one using command point again, rolling a one, and even didn't wound one of these 20 shots out of uh, this ghost arc, killed two of them. So, this is Necron's shooting turn four. We're going now to assault Necron. Necron's turn for assault phase. Finally, in the assault phase, the Necron warriors managed to kill Carbon Shrike. Uh, they didn't uh, consolidate for inches, so they are all in deployment zone. So it's looking good for Necrons get, uh, getting Warlock, slay the Warlock. So, so Kayvon mm -hmm. took four wounds from the warriors, passed through the four saves. I used my last command point to try to make that three up. I rolled a two, and now he's gone. Turn four, I moved uh, both the Canoness and the Inquisitor closer in this crazy Forge World model. And then I moved the Arcoflagellants out of cover, uh, close to the Crypt Tech, and along the right flank, uh, the Assassins and the Priest uh, looking at a long charge right now. So we'll go to the second phase and be right Okay, so uh, Inquisitor once again manages to get off a nice uh, psychic power. This time Smite takes two wounds off the Tesseract Art. So now in the shooting phase. In the shooting phase, the Heavy Bolter Squad managed to get uh, two wounds taken off the Tesseract Vault. Hit both times with both Inferno pistols, but failed to wound both times. So uh, it still stands with eight wounds onto the assault. Okay, so in the charge phase, the Death Cult Assassins did not make the 11th inch charge. Um, but the Archoflagellants did. Uh, they did a, oh, 11 wounds on the Cryptek and got that unit into assault as well. Uh, fortunately, the Cryptek made 10 saves and uh, managed to kill one in return, and the Immortals killed one in return. So, we're going to take one look, more look at the battlefield as we see Simon is moved nicely and mostly with his vehicles, but a huge tranche of infantry over here. Uh, there's no way I can prevent him from winning this game. So, at the bottom of Imperial Turn 4, we're going to call it. Simon, very good game, sir. You too. There we go. All right, death to the false emperor. Thanks for watching, and uh, there'll be more reports for 40K coming in the future. Bye-bye. So, guys, we are back here uh, with a victory for the uh, Necrons. Death to the false emperor, I would just say. He's still alive. GW Stuttgart will now be equalized in points. Mm. So...
go ahead. What was your thoughts about the game? Uh, well, it was my first uh, real game of 8th edition, and boy, it's just a lot of fun. Um, lots of uh, stuff to learn, obviously, with the new edition, but it is a, a good time, and uh, I, I had a lot of fun. Me too, me too. Uh, let's talk about my Unrecorded List. Okay, my Unrecorded List was obviously uh, built up on surveillance or durability. I particularly love the uh, fluff of the Necron Phalanx when the legions are approaching, uh, putting a lot of firepower with barges for reanimation. I'm trying to play mostly fluffy, so, but this list is kind of hard still. I, I don't think it is a super tournament list or something, but it's quite solid and tough one. Uh, as far as my list, uh, the sisters did not do as well as I had hoped. They, they would really suffered under that first turn onslaught from the Necrons. Uh, perhaps not trying to steal the initiative might have been a mistake, but uh, I really wanted that last turn to be able to repulse anybody who finally made it across the line, not realizing they'd all be across the line by turn four. So uh, maybe a mistake. It, it, you, you really took out two squads of sisters uh, very early on, mm. and that was supposed to be the speed bump that stopped you so I could get my assault troops up. It forced me to move my assault troops out much faster than, which stopped, much faster than I uh, wanted to, uh, which ended up getting the Vanguard uh, jump packs killed very quickly, unfortunately. Yes, I think I think this was also the scissor that you didn't made out of, I think, uh, 10 armor saves, you didn't make 9 or something. Yeah, it was, uh, I failed 7 out of 8 is what it was. and. Uh, you know, that plane blowing up didn't help me either. Kayvon Shrike did a, a great job despite losing three more wounds yes. very early on. Uh, kept you tied up. He was he was killing warriors, but he didn't have any support over there once the Dreadnought was destroyed. Uh, Dreadnought did good if he could have killed that Lord, and there was a good chance he could have. Yes, Hitting on twos, winning on twos. Um, and the hitting on twos was with the reroll because Kayvon was, mm -hmm. was there as well. I, I thought I had a good chance to kill the Lord. If I could have done that, things on the left flank would have been vastly different. Yeah, I think, but in the end, it, it went up like, I think, 8 3 with the world kill. Uh, yeah, you did win 8 3 uh, when I called it at 4. And uh, looking at the board, there was no way I was going to take out those vehicles um, and chase around your guys trying to assault them with my Death Cult Assassins. I, I just wasn't making any ground on them. And the Archaeoflagellants just didn't do the job once they did get in mm -hmm. to assault with your crypt tech. Um, and and that, was, uh, that was the end for the Imperium. Uh, my opinion, for example, on the Nitron Bomber, he's 20, uh, two, uh, 270 points apiece. Uh, quite a lot, I would say. Um, just actually managing three mortal wounds on your exercise and then I think uh, two or three Seraphim I killed with the Tesla. Two. Two. So, uh, and the thing was actually that he draw all the firepower. The two flyers draw all the firepower of him, buying me one more round, uh, round of having almost complete squads, getting into even rapid fire range and to, yes, decimate you very, very hard in a way. I think the flyers well, 270 points is quite expensive, but it was worth it. This one round was really worth it that uh, he uh, managed this. Uh, the Doom side, well, I can't judge on him so much because he didn't hit at all the Dreadnought, I think. Yeah. So, well, at least he, he took some also some firepower away. So, yes, and there's also, I think it's 240. 30 or 40 points for one, so quite expensive, but still worth it, I think. And then, speaking about the Seraphim, they actually did uh, very well. They helped take down the bomber, and then they uh, moved forward very quickly with that active faith as they have uh, managed to get into combat and do some damage. You, you wisely moved them out of combat and, and destroyed them with a bunch of shooting, um, but I really like what they do, and I think I'll be running my second squad of Seraphim in the future. So, yeah, I think they're just so good. The hand flamers, <laughs> <laughs> they're hand flamers. Uh, okay, though they are just toughness free up, but they can uh, spit them a lot of shots on you. Yes. So that's handy. I mean, toughness four on the hand flamer would be a little bit over the top. Yeah, and. Uh... 
the uh, melted guns that they get are another good option. I might yes. have in the future. Um, not so much against Necrons with the quantum shielding, but uh, against other armies, getting four melted gun shots is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I'm, I'm, quantum shielding is a rule I really like it. I mean, he's ha happy for having damage six, but you just roll off four or five and then it's equalized like this. So. This uh, rule is quite nasty. Yeah, and with those arcs having 14 wounds, it makes them really difficult to Yes, 14 wounds, mm. yes. Toughness 6, though, but still amount of wounds. Yeah, I don't have a lot of things that are, you know, shooting toughness 6 or toughness 7. There's not, you know, a whole lot in the game that does that, at least from the Imperial side. So, yep. And I think Tesla with my will be done is, is really nasty. I mean, you get the Tesla rule uh, triggering on a 5 plus already so getting then uh, 3 hits from 5 plus and 6 plus it's nasty I mean you were in cover with your marines you had a 2 up but when you try to manage to make like uh, 21 21 hits and then I think like like uh, 17 wounds I was talking 21 wounds oh, wounds oh yeah sorry I forgot about this one <laughs> yeah but it was nuts that was really nuts but you saved quite a lot on them I did but uh, in the end not enough yes so. And Necrons are really an army which are fighting almost, let's say, almost uh, similar to the Death Corps of Cree Creek. They are a attrition warfare army and their Achilles feast is uh, two things. First of all, assault. There, they're not good. I mean, you can take Lich Guard, you can take uh, Praetorians, that's okay but your regular troops are not designed for No, they're not going to kill anything, but between their high toughness of four, their armor saves pretty good, and then continuing to get back up in, in leadership 10. Yeah, just you overwhelm them just by yeah. sheer numbers. That's Let's what say. happened to poor Caven Shrike, is uh, he just got overwhelmed by sheer numbers, and, yes. and that's what they do. If you can't get them down and, and get that unit gone, mm -hmm. uh, you might be looking at near full yes. capacity unit the next turn. And the second thing, what is like the most Achilles Achilles feast of of the of the Necrons is the mobility. With just five, okay, with my will be done. You can uh, enhance it a little bit, but still mobility is a big thing. So when you go for tournaments uh, with tactical objectives, kill points, and tertiary objectives, so you have to do something that you get tactical objectives, particularly if. You don't draw the cards which you need. And that's another thing that makes the Teslas uh, an attractive choice is you can go ahead and advance with them and you just get minus one to your shooting. Yes. So it's a really good weapon, especially on the Immortals. So I think uh, for uh, for my setup, I will probably go for one Immortals, uh, full Immortal squad with Ghost Blasters and a second one just for, for uh, Tesla. Maybe I'm thinking if the points will. B, maybe taking out one, uh, the Night Shroud, for example, and uh, taking a third uh, Immortal Squad inside with Tesla. That would be really, really, really awesome. All right, so I think next game I'll, I'll pull out my Imperial Guard and see how the 17th uh, Shetland like Dragoons do. Uh, but looking forward to playing. Yes, me too. So, guys, we'll see you next time for, for Team Yankee of 40k. Yep, go ahead and make sure that uh, you leave a comment if you like the video and subscribe. Talk to you later.